Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of AUHSD Future Talks. I'm your host, Michael Matsuda, the superintendent of the Anaheim Union High School District. And as our 6,000 plus podcast listeners know that this show is dedicated to the future of public education, the future of jobs and careers, and uh, for our 30,000 plus students. We've been very lucky to have so many amazing, amazing people from higher ed and from corporate and nonprofit to talk about uh, the future, but we have many of our own people too, including teachers and teacher leaders and our very own chief academic officer, Mr. Manuel Colon. Manuel, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Suda. Thank you for having me. So Manuel, uh, we always start with a little bit about who you are and what is your driver and give us a little bit of inf personal information about you. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I think that um, as always, these conversations really enlighten not only what is happening in AUHSD, but really what is happening in education today. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm one of seven children. Uh, my parents came to the United States uh, from Mexico, a little town called Jerez, Zacatecas in Mexico. And um, I've grown up in uh, a town nearby Anaheim called uh, Norwalk, uh, which is very similar to, to Anaheim. Um, went to school in, in Norwalk, then uh, did uh, went to college in Santa Cruz, um, at UC Santa Cruz, then went on to get my master's at Stanford where I got my teaching credential. And I started teaching in San Jose, California, up north, uh, where I started my teaching career back in 1991. And uh, here I am back in Anaheim, a place that I love and adore in terms of, of uh, not only the community of Anaheim, uh, but also the work that we're doing here in Anaheim Union High School District. Yes, an amazing lived experience, Manuel. And we often talk about our own personal mastery, our personal drivers. What, what is your personal driver? You know, I think for me, um, growing up and having the challenges that I had growing up uh, as a young Latino and the challenges of, of you know, having low expectations for, for you know, myself and, and, and my fellow students um, and knowing that, um, you know, that, that I was not encouraged to go to college. I was not encouraged to pursue higher education. And so for me, the driver is about making sure that, that kids of color in particular, but all students have as many opportunities as possible um, in terms of their future. And, and really about making sure that doors are open to them, that they're prepared uh, for the, their future and they're taking advantage of those opportunities. You know, you've also been principal both at Sycamore and at Savannah, but that's and and you've made an impact at both schools, all the schools that you've been at, Manuel. But tell us a little bit about what happened at Savannah because uh, that has impacted the district, and the district now is considered to be a leader in uh, the sort of uh, capstone type of portfolio. How did that evolve at Savannah High School? Um, well, thank you for asking, Ms. Matsuda, uh, because I, I think that um, I, you know, I'm proud of the work that that I've done as a teacher first and foremost. Um, but I know that the work that I've done as a principal um, has really guided um, the impact that that I feel I can create as a district. And so, um, as a principal at Savannah back in 2010, um, we began to develop teacher leaders through our school leadership team, through other types of, of teams that, that really were building the capacity of our teachers. So through these groups, um, we started to develop a, a vision for our school. What is it that we wanted for our students coming out of Savannah High School? Uh, as a school community, we identified very specific skills that we wanted to have our students um, as they were exiting. Uh, so it was important for us to have that vision and understanding of what is it that we want for our students? What is it that we are committed to our community that we are providing for our students as they were going through Savannah? 
Um, so that was pretty important in terms of having all stakeholders, our students, our parents, our staff, all agree that these are the skills and this is our vision for our kids uh, as they matriculate through, through our school. So that led us to really identify um, very specific skills, which we know now as the five C's, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, uh, character, and compassion, uh, to really uh, identify what, what you know, how are we going to measure these things? If we believe that these are the skills that our kids need, how are we going to measure it? So that, you know, really uh, helped us focus our work and through the conversations we were having uh, through our school leadership team and through uh, very specific teacher leaders, in particular one, uh, Mr. Um, Mike Switzer, who was one of our English teachers at Savannah at the time, um, really to think about how we were going to begin to measure these skills. And, and so through our, our department collaborations, through our, our work that we did as a school, um, we began to develop this thing called the capstone, uh, which now has been in existence at Savannah now for, for 10 years, which we are really proud of. Yeah, so that has grown district wide, this capstone. And I, why do you think that not only has it grown district wide, but uh, there's a lot of tension from outside the district, the state of California, in this capstone sort of construct for education? You know, one of the most powerful things that we have learned from the capstone interviews that we do at Savannah is that it's really a reflection of student learning. You know, when you see students processing and saying, this is why I've done what I've done. This is how I've learned what I've learned. Um, and they give you specific examples of, of, of student, of, of classwork that they've done with their teachers. When you see that in their process, you begin to get excited about students really understanding and processing their learning. We have not seen that anywhere else. You know, students usually take a class, get a grade and check it off. I'm completed. I've completed the work and I'm done. Um, never really reflecting about how it all interconnects and how it all prepares them for their future. What Savannah's capstone does is it, it actually creates a reflection for the students and a reflection about their learning and how their learning really is preparing them for their future. So that I think is what's so powerful about the capstone. I know it really impacted me as an educator before I became superintendent to uh, sit in on the capstone uh, exit interviews with the graduating seniors. And uh, you're absolutely right in terms of students taking more ownership of their education and really reflecting on the meaning of it. And I think being better positioned upon graduation in terms of a roadmap and what 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 is next how, how are they going to use their education or apply their education so it, it's very it's been very impactful um but also part of your journey mr cologne has been the heading the uh district initiative on the pledge which is part of the next steps beyond high school graduation could you explain and share how that evolved and uh, with our partners. Absolutely. So, so the pledge really was uh, uh, a culmination of the work that we have done through a group called the Anaheim Collaborative. And the Anaheim Collaborative really evolved um, as we began to est establish relationships with our higher ed partners. That's Fullerton College, Cypress College, Cal State Fullerton, UC Irvine. Um, we also have the TGR Foundation, which is part of that, Orange County United Way, that's a part of it. And now we've added both Orange County Department of Ed and, and other part community partners like uh, um, Ocapica and, and the city of Anaheim. So through this collaboration, um, you know, many of us have been part of other collaboratives at, in other districts or have developed other types of partnerships. Um, we began to say, you know, we have a lot of capacity in this group. And we need to really create a structure that uh, guarantees for all of our students in the Anaheim Union High School District certain experiences that will lead them to uh, their career goals, completion of their career goals. We believe that through our partnership, we can develop these, these experiences and it will give all of our students an opportunity to not only you know, uh, uh, attend post-secondary uh, schools, but also prepare them for whatever career or whatever, uh, um, 
you know, goals they have after high school. So we began to really be very intentional and backwards map what those experiences were. So through uh, our district, we began to develop those strategies and those specific uh, activities, seven through 12. Um, and then our college partners began to develop what is it that we're committing to? Once the students get to our institutions, what are we committing to to make sure that the, that the students continue to be successful? And so uh, little by little, we began to develop very specific strategies um, for case or actually K-16 now with the uh, Anaheim City Elementary School District. Um, but really uh, at the time we were developing it through seven through 16. And, and we were very, very intentional about making sure that not only did we include the academic preparation, we included the college and career guidance that many of us were already familiar with, but we felt that it was important for us to include the parent engagement, family and parent engagement. We feel that the parents and the families are critical to the success of the students. Uh, and then we also added training for our staff because we believe that in partnership with our staff and our parents, our students can be successful. So that then evolved into what we now call the Anaheim Union Educational Pledge, um, which now has been in existence since 2016. And we now have longitudinal data around the pledge, especially from our higher ed partners, UC Irvine. Could you share with the audience some of the longitudinal findings around the pledge? Absolutely. So what we've seen is that not only are they entering um, college at a higher rate, so we see the acceptance rates going up, but we also see the persistence rates, not only uh, in terms of our students, but they're outperforming the, the regular. So for example, at UC Irvine, 90% of the students persist, whereas for Anaheim Union, 94% of the students are persisting. They're persisting at a higher rate and they're earning more credits by the time they become sophomores. Um, all of this has been shared with us uh, from our partners at UC Irvine. In addition to that, our students are outperforming in terms of their grades. They're having higher grade point averages uh, as they arrive there, which tells us then that the preparation that they've received in our district um, has prepared them appropriately to be successful once they get to UC Irvine. But we see this trend going on uh, at Cal State Fullerton and our community colleges as well. So our friends at UCI are attributing this uh, to the, uh, the fact that more of our graduates have a sense of purpose and they also have these soft skills called the five C's. Can you talk about the sense of purpose that we try to cultivate in our district? Absolutely. You know, I, I think like anything uh, and kind of going back a little bit to the Savannah capstone that, you know, we, we, we try to help our students understand the why to their education. You know, you always say that education, uh, does education work for you or do you work for education? And, and I think that when we think about purpose, we really think about that, you know, education works for our students. And, and our students really uh, begin to develop that understanding of, of, of why they are learning what they're learning. They begin to develop a voice, which is critical to, to who they are. And that voice comes from their identity. Uh, all of what, you know, what we are doing in, in terms of the implementation of the five C's across our curriculum is that students begin to, to, to develop that sense of purpose, that sense of self, that voice that is within them to really start to, to act on, on that, you know, and control their future. And so what we are seeing with UCI in particular, and I'm sure that if you talk about any of our students across any university across the United States, they are demonstrating this sense of purpose, this voice that they, uh, they have meaning to, to what they are saying. Um, they, they believe in what they are saying and, and they can articulate um, their learning. Which, which is very unique and it's what UCI has seen in our students. They are, they are uh, expressing themselves well. They are understanding their purpose in terms of their connection to others and the world. And they're also um, you know, more conscientious to, their, to, to their, their, the global uh, environment that they live in. And so, so it's very intentional and, and we are seeing that that is what's helping them be successful past high school. So you talked about the development and affirmation of student identity. Um, that's a lot easier said than done. I mean, there's a lot of work behind that. You talk about 
implicit bias training or even bringing in ethnic studies. How does that connect to uh, development of a student's or affirmation of a student's identity? I think it's essential. You know, we're talking about students. It, our district is very diverse and we're very fortunate for that. Um, we have, you know, over 50 languages that are spoken. Uh, our students come from all different backgrounds. And so it's critical that they know who they are and they know their place in the world. And so our teachers are embedded through the five C's, through projects like the, the Catella Talks, through, you know, projects uh, uh, like the Capstone at Savannah and the Capstone at Western. Um, our students are able to, to reflect on who they are. Um, they're able to understand who they are through these activities um, and really be able to articulate, um, you know, again, uh, uh, where they are in terms of their co contributions to society in general. But it really starts with what, what, what is happening in the classroom and the experiences the students are having in terms of their own cultural identity. Um, and it's encouraged through the activities, again, the activities that are founded in the five C's that allows the students to really um, self, self, create an awareness for who they are as people. Um, so, so again, it, it, you know, we embrace the diversity in our district and that I think is what has helped our students really um, have the confidence they need to, to understand themselves and, and the larger community. You know, Manuel, you and I and, uh, have had a number of conversations about this uh, sort of uh, this pipeline that we're trying to create this uh, and this narrative, especially among uh, low-income Latinos and uh, other first-generation immigrant groups, you yourself have mentioned you're from part of Mexico, Jerez, which actually uh, a number of our um, uh, Latinx community is from, the same regions. Could you, um, in fact, you're the first one who told me about, hey, you know, there's a lot of families from the same area, a lot of employees from the same area. Could you elaborate on those conversations and then how we're trying to change this narrative? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that happens with, with uh, many Mexican, Mexican Americans that migrate to the United States is, is that, you know, we do that with the consciousness of, 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 of helping each other. And, and many come from, from, from small villages or small towns in Mexico. Um, they make it to the United States either through, you know, generations. You know, my family came to the United States during the Bracero program back in 1942 when my, my grandfather was recruited to come help during World War II. Um, so where these families um, get established, usually um, what ends up happening is they begin to support and help other family members come come to the United States. Obviously, you know, they're coming for, for, for better opportunities for themselves and their kids. In some cases, they're, they're, they're coming for very specific necessities. And so, and so once they come to the United States and are helping each other, they usually begin to, to you know, they live with, with relatives. Like in my case, my grandfather was in the United States. He helped my uncle, he helped my father, and they all lived in one apartment uh, as they were working. And so, and so many families begin to, to establish themselves in, in certain towns and, and, and they begin to help each other and begin to build a community within a community. Um, it's critical because they begin to support each other. They begin to obviously um, surround themselves around uh, culture, around religion, around the, their food. Um, and then it begins, you know, to, 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 to uh, it begins to grow in terms of opportunities. And for many of our family, you know, once one of us went to college, others, you know, followed and they followed because they wanted to know, you know, what steps did you take to get to college? And that begins to grow in, the, in, in this. But, very but, but there's been a but there's been a tension. Right. Because there there are uh, Latinos who are uh, making it through college, getting those narratives are not strong in the community, as strong, as strong as they should be in the community. There is a counter narrative about getting jobs, right? Just, you know, getting any job because you came here and you can get a job, you can send money back home to Mexico. Um, that's that tension has affected our message, you know, K through 12 message, you know, you've got to prepare yourself for college. And now it's just so expensive to go to college, it's even more difficult. Could you 
we're, we're trying to intentionally change that narrative for especially young Latinos uh, in terms of the pledge and the, the AIM program, the things that we're trying to bring uh, into uh, the system. Um, could you just talk a little bit more about changing that narrative? Absolutely. And, and you know, again, many times, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're limited to uh, the traditional track of saying we, we graduate from one school, go to the next school and, and move on to college. But we never really fully understand what opportunities we have in terms of, of jobs and job opportunities and goals. One of the things that 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 tends to happen is that, you know, again, growing up first generation, um, my, you know, my, my parents, because there were seven kids, my my uh, expectation was to get any job coming out of high school, um, really to help support the family. And, and with what's challenged about that is that you begin to limit your your, you know, your opportunities, you begin to limit your your growth in terms of your job. And, and you begin to limit your earnings across time. And, and so what we have done in Anaheim Union is that we have really provided opportunities for our kids to see um, what this world, uh, you know, what, what the world's gonna offer, not only today, but 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we have jobs that are not, that haven't been created yet. So how are we ensuring that our kids are prepared, not only for those jobs, but the current jobs that are higher paying, and so through our AIM program, through our collaborative, we are able to provide certifications for students that can, you know, as soon as they graduate from high school, if they are choosing that type of career, can earn them up to $60,000 a year, which would be unheard of in, in, in either when I was growing up or in small communities, um, specifically of, of Latino uh, students who traditionally just need to get a job to help support the family. And so and so for us, it's essential to make sure that these opportunities are open to our students. Um, we are very intentional in the relationships that we're building with businesses and industries uh, to make sure that our students are at the front of the line of getting these opportunities, um, either internships or mentorships that, you know, in, in, in affluent neighborhoods, this happens naturally. This happens because that's just the way, you know, your, your community is or your family's uh, history is and, and generations. Many of our students didn't have that or don't have that same opportunity. So our district has been very intentional about creating these same opportunities um, for, for students that would never have had these opportunities. And that, that includes our, our, our um, first generation Latino students. You know, in the few minutes that we have left, uh, Manuel, I wanted to come back to the success of the pledge and the collaborative and, and how much uh, effort uh, was put in to build those relationships between institutions, but they began with building relationships with the, the, the actual people from those institutions. Could you talk about how important relational capital is especially as we go forward into very uncertain times. Yeah, it's essential. When we first started the conversation, you know, uh, seven, eight years ago, it, 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 you know, we didn't know each other. We, we, we didn't know each other. Um, even the institutions didn't speak to each other. Right. And so when we started, we started with just building relationship. We started with a very small group of people and saying, hey, what do we want to accomplish? How do we want to support students in Anaheim Union? That started to evolve. It took us three years to, to create the pledge. You know, people think that we snapped our fingers and it was done. No, it took three years to really uh, build the relationship build what it was that we wanted to do, have a common vision and mission, uh, and then really execute what that was going to be about. And so our partners um, really have bought in uh, through these relationships. Um, and, and you know, the, what, what has happened in this relationship is that we are able to move quicker. We are able to execute. We are able to move our institutions to agree in terms of uh, not only the opportunities we're providing for our students, but the intentionality of supports that we are creating for our students. We can now call, you know, the, the vice president of, of, of UCI and say, hey, I have a student who is struggling here, and they immediately get on it 
we can call the president of Cypress College and Fullerton College and say, hey, we have this opportunity to partner with this grant. Are you interested? Absolutely. We have those types of relationships that allow us not only to continue and to strengthen the work that we're doing through the collaborative and through the pledge, but open more opportunities that, that are coming to us either from them or from us in terms of, in the form of grants, in the form of programs um, that we are now implementing school-wide or district-wide. But it's because of those relationships that we have, the trust that we have as a group um, that allows us to do that. And, and we all know the purpose. The purpose is to make sure that our kids are getting the best out of all of us uh, and ensuring that our kids have uh, the opportunities they need. And it goes back to our model, right? Unlimited you, unlimited you, we are, we are making sure that, 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 you know, it's all in that everything that we have accessible to us is to ensure that our kids are unlimited in their opportunities. And we truly believe that. And we act on it every day, every, on a daily basis. Well, Mr. Colon, I can't think of a better way to end this interview what you, with what you just said. It's amazing. Um, you talk about relationships, you talk about trust, talk about leadership. We are so blessed to have you, Mr. Colon, as our chief academic officer, someone who embodies uh, all of those attributes. So uh, on behalf of our students and our parents and all of our staff members, thank you so much for your leadership and your commitment to all of our young people. Thank you, Mr. Matsuda, and thank you for the opportunity.